What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Home Built Workshop. What in the world are we doing today? Today, I am building an effects loop pedal which will allow us to go from no effects on our guitar to selecting several pedals at once without stepping on a whole bunch of different ones. Stick around, check it out. If you're a musician that uses some sort of effects pedals, you will know this situation all too well. You've spent a lot of time laying out the perfect pedal board. It is full of all of your favorite pedals and effects, but the one combination that you really like to use, you have to hit four or five different ones at the same time doing the old pedal tap dance. If only there was a way to access all of them at once, well actually you're in luck because there is. Now you guys probably already are aware that there are companies out there making these looper pedals where you can plug in all of your different effects. What it actually does is creates another effects loop, much like you'll find on your amp, but these are selectable by a foot switch. Today we're gonna build just a small one using a small project enclosure. This is just gonna be a single loop we're gonna have a loop going in and a loop going out and you're gonna be able to select that. There are companies and other builders that make large units like this, so it's really all you have to do is take the design for this and duplicate it again and again and again to get whatever size that you want. But for what I need, the single looper is gonna be just fine. So the parts that we're going to use are this small project enclosure. We've got a jack so that we can plug this into a nine volt power supply a few quarter inch mono plugs. We've got a three pole dual throw foot switch. This is gonna allow us to switch the different things. We've got some LEDs, some resistors for the LEDs. So the biggest challenge is going to be to cram all of these jacks, plugs, and the foot switch into this little enclosure. This thing has enough room. I just have to lay them out in the right spot to make them all fit. So let's get at it. So I believe in order to get everything to fit, I need to start at one end and basically work my way down. I don't know yet where everything needs to land, but I do know that I want the power jack on the end, probably down towards the lower half. This is gonna be really easy to do. I can just use the box to draw diagonals to locate the center. Then I can measure down a little bit and then drill my hole. With the power jack on this side, now I want to mount the foot switch. I know it's gonna go somewhere down here at the end. Since there is not a lot of room here to work all these jacks in, I wanna to try to keep it as far towards this end as possible. I'll just take a couple measurements with some calipers that I can then transfer to the enclosure. Now I know what we have to work with. Not a lot of space. Four jacks gotta go in there. I'm just kinda playing around with a fitment, trying to figure out how closely I can put these things together. I think I'm gonna have to clearance these a little bit by bending these tabs. That way I can nest them in a little bit closer. After a little bit of trial and error and some measurements, I ended up with these jacks about one inch apart. Now this wasn't a lot of room to work with, an inch and an eighth or even an inch and a quarter would have been a lot better. But with this tiny enclosure, I just didn't have that kind of space and had to jam these in as close as I could. With all the holes for the jacks drilled, the last one I need to drill is a tiny hole for the LED to fit through. Fingers crossed, let's see if it fits. Well, it fits, barely. That's a lot of stuff in a little bag right there. Now, I gotta pull it all back apart and do a little bit of finishing work and then we'll wire this thing up. This is aluminum. Aluminum polishes pretty well. What do you say we hit this with a buffer and see what kind of shine we can get out of it? I think that'd be cool. It. Well, this thing polished up really well. It looks like a chrome to me. Not quite a mirror shine, but I'll take it. Now, the fun part, I've got my schematic here. It's time to wire this thing up. I believe this is gonna be just a little tricky just because everything is kind of crammed into this enclosure. But if I just take my time, follow the schematic carefully, it's gonna work out just fine. 
First, I'm going to solder the LED circuit. All right, let's test this out real quick. Before we get too much farther, and we at least <laughs> we at least have an LED that turns on and off. Cool. Now I'll move on to soldering all the jacks together. I tried to solder what I could outside of the enclosure just because it's easier and there's more space to work with. Ooh, holy cow. That was tricky. And not quite so fast. <laughs> We're not done just yet. Right when I went to put the back cover on this thing, I noticed that the terminal that I just finished soldering looked a little weird and I must have overheated it because it pulled right out of the foot switch the very last one now I'm just gonna have to unsolder the rest of these connections pull this foot switch out replace it with a new one resolder it and then we can move on Upon inspection, I think we're good. And now I'll make sure all the jacks and everything are nice and tight before installing the back panel. And just so I know what goes where, I'm just going to use a Sharpie to label all of the plugs. We have an input, an output, a send, and a return. So now I have the completed pedal out here in the shop. I've got it all connected to just a couple of pedals just to demonstrate the operation of this. Got it connected to a small practice amp as well as a guitar here. Let me just kind of show you how this thing can work. Maybe give you some ideas how you might utilize a pedal like this. So I've got everything connected just to show you what we have. This line right here is coming from the guitar and this line is going out to the amp. This is the send line which we send to the input of whatever pedals we're going to line together. In this case, I have a Teely modded DS1, pretty cool pedal. We're going to come out of the DS1 into this Neoclone chorus pedal, out of the chorus pedal, back into the return line of our effects loop pedal. Now you could have any combination of pedals here, any number of them all chained together. I've just grabbed a couple of them just to plug together so I can demonstrate how this thing works. When our pedal is switched off, the signal from our guitar is coming in and it's going right back out to the amp. This is in complete true bypass. None of the signal is going through the pedals. But when we turn it on, now the signal is coming in from the guitar it's going back out here through whatever pedals we have together, coming back in here, and then back out to the amp. Now we're not going to be turning these on and off together, but what you would do in a pedal board situation is you would just turn everything on, and then you would be able to access this loop by clicking this foot switch, which will select both of these. You don't have to step on several at the same time. And of course the LED is nice because you can clearly tell when you have the loop engaged or when it's off. So using this in a performance situation would be, you'd be able to use it without the effect anytime you wanted to, but as soon as you want to access both of these effects together, you just hit the pedal one time and now, you're going to access both of these together. Now you're not switching these individually on and off, but we've created an effects loop to where you can access them all together at the same time. It can really save you from doing the pedal tap dance, honestly. I wish I had one of these several years ago when my original band was really active. I have this gigantic pedal board, all kinds of pedals, and there are several times when I have to step on a bunch of them at the same time to access one certain combination of sounds. This would have really helped out a lot. So thanks a lot for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this project. I do know that this is a little bit more specific project. Not everybody's gonna need this sort of thing, but you guys know me. I like to do a lot of different things tried lots of different kinds of projects. I don't like to just stick to one specific thing. So 
That's why I want to share this with you. Plus, I know this is a project that I'm going to get some use out of. I will put a link to the schematic down in the video description. Again, not my schematic, but I do want to share and give credit to the one that I did use for this project. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought of this project, and we'll see you next time. And yes, I am wearing a beanie and a sweatshirt. <laughs> it's 48 degrees here. Crazy Colorado weather. <sighs> I lost my piece of solder. Where'd it go? Seriously, where'd it go? I just had it. I just broke that one. I gotta go grab another jack. I was trying to clearance <laughs> the terminals. I'm gonna lie to you. This is hard. I'm telling you right now.